Christie versus Eve was going on. And that brings me into my first kind of story. I want to know what everyone thinks about Major League Fishing came out this week, and, and they're really only going to have two more tournaments for the rest of the year, where we've had eight or nine tournaments every year. Now they've done three, and out of nowhere, they're having just two more for the rest of the season. And I'm kind of disappointed in it, to be honest. I think it's, I think it's kind of, um, I think it's kind of crappy. I mean, uh, I like what they're doing online. What they're doing online has been fantastic. I mean, Jason versus Edwin is fantastic right now. But overall, um, I think that, well, maybe this is the way that they should be doing it, doing these little things. But I wanted, to, and we'll ask David how how this is affecting his. You know his his overall. Um, you know, is this uh, is this affecting his uh, his sponsorship? We're going to ask all of that. So, um, we'll 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 talk to David here soon. He was going to call me before three, and hopefully that whole works out too. If not, it'll be I'll call Mike over to go. We'll see what he's going on because I actually you want to I'm going to call Mike right now. Let me put on a quick commercial. Let me get rid of a whole bunch of screens. And let me put in a quick commercial of for Tackle Webs, and let me call Mike. So I'll be back in a minute. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important, and what he forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle Webs. With Tackle Webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com. Okay, coming with us, my boy, Captain Mike Ortigo. Oh, I got you on the wrong screen. Hold on, Mike. There you oh, are. Damn it. <laughs> Call my agent. <laughs> Let go. How are you, man? What's up, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great. It's great to see you. Uh, How's that quarantine life? Yeah, I mean, Jesus, Murphy, what is going on? Are we are we ever going to get out of this? Started going out yet? Uh, what we we went? No, no, we went to my mom and dad's house. That's the only thing we've done. We haven't Good really. Done, we really haven't done. Have you? I've gallivanted out. I know you went fishing on Friday. How was a fishing photo oh, did, shoot? Yeah, we did a shoot. But yeah, we went out and got a little wind, but it was nice. Found some clean water. You know? Yeah. It was uh lots of lots of uh finger mullet, lots of porpoises out there. Oh really? Yeah. Did you, how was the a lot grass? Of dead horseshoe crabs, man. Like really? disturbing them out. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder upsetting. What... I wonder why that is. I'm assuming the water quality. Oh, that's, like that's not good. I Before I called you, I was talking about uh, Major League Fishing deciding out of nowhere they were going to have only two more tournaments for the year. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like it? Tis the times, man. I don't know. Everybody's trying to figure things out. I think they could probably do more. You know, Um or do you guys, you know, everybody just kind of reset and try to get things together and try to do a better product next next year, you know, next season. I, I'm not sure. I mean. Well, Bass Major Bass went out and di they're going to reschedule all their tournaments. Right. And I just assumed, even though I, th I think that Bass rescheduling it is going to make them fish some really hard areas and it's going to be tough fishing some of those later months in November and stuff like that. But I still think. I still think that it's cool that they're at least trying to get them up and, and working. Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it depends on TV time, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, season's shot, or they, you know, can they can they air and get things produced by the time they want it 
to be produced and in the can and ready to go. That's that time frame. That, that's probably exactly what it is, to be honest. And they ha- they've had to purchase that time. Major League Fishing's had to purchase that time before, and now not being able to have that. I mean, I, I'm wondering how is this affecting anglers? Is it affecting sponsorships? Is it affecting what? How how much is this af- affecting those ang- everybody in Major League Fishing? Sure, uh, you get less chances to win. Yeah. Um, your sponsorships, depending on what you, you know, if you're not getting them exposure, that's not helping them and not helping the sponsors. So, yeah. You know, I think there's a lot, they're doing a lot more. They're trying to, they're trying to do different things to try to soften the blow, trying to get more options, trying to do, you know, some of these, you know, quarantine tournaments and stuff like that that they're doing. They're, they're one-on-ones and stuff like that. So, you know, they're, they're doing the best they can. I mean, it's, some sponsors may not be happy with it. Yeah. But everybody's got to be understanding at this point. Everybody's just kind of pivoting as much as they can to try to produce and get the most they can out of this time. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I think uh, I think having major um, bass deciding they're going to run tournaments through November, I think that just made ba- – I actually think it finally put bass – not like they needed to be put over the hump, but I think they it, it's made bass more – important right now i think they're they're doing uh i i think they're doing a great job on on getting that tournament schedule out and fans to it where major league fishing doesn't worry about fans at all so yeah i mean it's a it's a production tournament for tv right? yeah made for tv where it bass is. was originated as a tournament trail and it's still a tournament trail and those guys really do need to eat the yeah. guys that are you know put themselves into the elite series this year so you know they've got to do what they can do um you know again it's the unknown yeah you know what what happens if somebody starts to get somebody catches you know gets sick yeah well, where does it go with that or if they have this you know resurgence of, of types or yeah you know are these guys gonna bass fish you know with masks on <laughs> you know? I, I, I mean i'm I I just am. I'm just surprised. I was really surprised when There's major no co-anglers. I would assume no, no, you know, no, no co-anglers. That kind of stuff. Any of those events anymore? So, yeah. Well, we have one tournament that comes in June here in Kissimmee. The heavy hitters from Major League Fishing will will be able to cover in depth and up close and personal, which should, which will be great for us. Um, and we'll get to see some of our friends. I reached out and asked, are they going to allow media to come out there? And they've given me no answer, and it's been four days. Uh, so I don't know if the media is not like, you know, the one the one we went to Okeechobee, I went to Okeechobee this year, and we were the only media person out there. So right. I'm not sure they even want media out there at this point in time. But uh, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't know at this point. Will people be out on their boats trailing these guys at the same time? You know, they don't. How does that all work out? They don't. They don't follow the the major league fishing. Doesn't get the crowd because they're not they're not really a a, a made for a fan interaction. They're a television show where yeah. that that's why Bass has had this resurgence on people being very happy on on what Bass is doing. Uh, so. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I think it's... Those I just tournaments are during the week, not even on the weekends. Yeah. Bass has a heavy weekend tournaments, so more people can get out on their boats. And, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, when all this settles down, if it does, where everybody, you know, where the chips lay, man. Mm-hmm. So... Well, I, I know for a fact we had a, a really big shipment of, of what came in yesterday for all of us Tackle Webs fans. Tag webs. The hats. hats came in. How It'll be available soon? Yeah, that's great news. You'll be on the website with a whole bunch. Is that going in the swag, or are we going to put that in, in accessories? Now that I'm looking at it, <laughs> I think we're going to have to make a swag collection. Swag. Swag collection. I can do yeah, that. Man, you tell me. Yeah, I think we. Well, I mean, if we need to change it, we'll change it. So that's great news. How? Just out of curiosity, how many hats? Sharp looking you, hats, man. Oh, they're awesome looking hats. I've been wearing that hat for a month, yeah. two, three months. Now, yeah. now mine won't be dirty. They tied it to the. They tied it to a tail of a whale and sent it over here. <laughs> it took quite some time. 
finally they came in. <laughs> finally, finally got here. That's great news. I'm looking forward to it. We, we'll have some, some hats. You can go on uh, TackleWebs.com and get yourself a hat, and that'll be great news. What else has been happening? How How is the family? How has this last week been for being home and, and you know, all the stuff that you're doing for ta- in tackle webs and stuff like that. We're still humming along. I think things are starting to get cranking again. I know, um, you know, the uh, aspect of, you know, orders from our end, distributors and stuff are still ordering and sending them out. So they're going somewhere. People are buying them, which we appreciate. Yeah. And uh, we're keeping up with it being made here. You know, we're, we did some maneuvers to to secure supplies and materials ahead of time, seeing that coming down the pipe. So that was a good move for us. And, you know, we're, we're moving on hoping that everybody gets back to normal and the summer's as good as, as every, any other summer. And all our guys that we support and support us that use their boats and the guides and the professionals, you know, they can get back into working and, you know, hopefully get back into sliding down to the keys and going fishing down Mm -hmm. there, permanent bonefish and, and up here, and hopefully that you know water clears, and we can get on some redfish and trout, and maybe do some scalloping. You know, so we're trying to plan on everything going on going forward. Yeah. Um. You know, but nowadays it's more understandable when things don't go our way. We just kind of understand it and try to pivot. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that's that's how it is. I mean, we're living in a different world right now. It's been it's been craziness for. I don't even know. It's been six or seven weeks. It seems like. Yeah, it's been insane. You know, and it's you know everything's moving in you know in a digital world. You know, the boat ramps are crazy during the weekends. People are using their boats more often, so that's a positive sign for us in the industry. Um, and hopefully, you know, people have their supply chains in, in order. And I know a lot of dealers are out of supplies. So yeah, you know that's another thing. If you got empty shelves and you need to fill them. We've got a good product for you, yeah. too, you know? That's Maybe right. We can fill those orders for sure. So. Yeah. Well, you're not – I'm glad to hear Tackle Webs is doing great, and I'm glad to see you're doing well. I hear the kids in the background. Uh, I'm going to play a, – a, I, I appreciate you being on. You're going to be on every week. I think, actually, during this next week, I have a goal for us. I think both of us can be live and interview one person, so we're going to test that in the next week. So be prepared right. for a little test trial. We'll see. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna. It'll be eleven o'clock at night, but that's all right. <laughs> Past my bedtime. Now you got. Sh- well, I know at four o'clock it's daddy time at the Ortigo house. I've been told that. All right, brother. I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you soon, and and thank yeah, you very much. See you later, bro. That was Mike. That was Mike Ortigo. I'm going to. Uh, play a quick commercial and we're going to go into a a a a pre-interview with uh knocking tail lures and during that time i'm going to get a hold of david dudley so let's do this shaw video real fast in 1984 i turned pro in 1986 i qualified for my first bassmaster classic in the 30 years as a bass professional i've seen things come and go in that time i've won my share of battles you think you have bass thumb (laughs) I've got battle scars. I'm Shaw Grigsby Jr. with Tackle Webs. Clear the deck for battle. Our next guest is the owner and operator of Knocking Tail Lures or Controlled Descent Lures. You can find them on uh, knocking mycoastaloutdoors.com. I ca- I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to be able to say your last name Michael, but fr- from from my coast outdoors, it's Michael. How do you say your last name? Don't make me say it too. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say Acrylic. Acrylic. Okay. Thank God. Yeah. I, I didn't remotely try that. How are you today, today, man? I am great. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you. Uh, first, I should tell everybody I've, you s- sent some lures my way. I used them uh, um, a couple days ago, and I'm doing a closer look on them that you'll see fairly soon but before we get into the lures tell me a little bit about yourself how did you get introduced into the outdoors oh shoot uh started out when i was a kid uh doing a lot of pond fishing my my mom and my dad would take me out uh, my uncle had a pond so we had easy access we could always go yeah um from then i kind of you know got older started riding my bikes with my buddies we'd go 
sneak in the ponds, cross the fences, fish the creeks, things like that. And then I started saltwater fishing with my uncle. Uh, he'd go down to Port Aransas in Texas all the time. And uh, that kind of got me introduced into the saltwater fishing, and it just grew from there. Now, we met last year at ICAST, which uh, you were, you were at that point, you just had the one, I think it was just the one lure at that point in time, wasn't it? The controlled descent lures? I, I had just um, just released, I didn't release it yet, but I had it for ICAST. I had a five-inch version of the knock and tail. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't completely finished. Uh, that had some time constraints, um, but I had it uh, together enough to take it. I had it into the new product showcase uh, with a five-inch lure. I didn't have all the, the bells and whistles and the pretty decor on the side of it like they do now. Um, so I had that sh- had it there, and I got a lot of input from retailers that suggested to release a four-inch bait first. Um, so I kind of went back to the drawing board a little bit since I wasn't completely done yet. I didn't have a production mold ready, and we went with a four-inch lure. And, um, and I went with the five-inch first because I like to focus for big trout and big fish, so I wanted a bigger lure. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, from the marketing standpoint, the uh, four inch was going to be the better better way to go initially. So we went back to the drawing board and we came out with the four inch and we released it this past March. So we kind of jump. We're gonna we're gonna go back a little bit. How how did the process start to to have? Well, well, let's just start it this way. Most plastic lures, you have to somehow buy a rattle chamber, try to somehow figure out a way to get it in there to make it work properly. You end up pushing your thumb and indenting your thumb with that rattle, little beaded rattle, glass rattle chamber. But what your lure has, and I should grab one. Sorry. I should have grabbed one real right fast. Which I can is do it too. There. Okay, no, yes. Really. So so it has a rattle built in right there. Yes. Now, how did so, how did that whole process, why how, why did you think we, you needed to do this? Because it's different, and everyone knows sound attracts fish. Yes. Um, Actually, I came up with this idea uh, probably 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Really? And it was actually the first lure I ever tried to make um, other than modifying someone else's lure, which mm-hmm. I did my entire life. Uh, yeah. If it didn't do what I wanted, I would try to tweak it and make it do other things. Um, so with, with this one, that first lure, I really didn't have the CNC programming. I didn't have all of the... Uh, uh, access to the technology that I have today. We just did it on a manual mill, and it was a total flop. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, was a, it was a big lure. Once again, I was going for the big trout. It had a rattle in the tail, and it, and it spun like a corkscrew. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of shelved that and put the whole lure making business to the side. It, it wasn't even a business. It was just something that I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I came out with my controlled descent lures, which are slow sinking lures, uh, suspending lures. Uh, they're soft plastics, and you can make it do whatever you want, from floating to slow sinking. And you rig them weedless, so you don't get hung up on things. And that's the problem I was having back then, fishing in uh, Baffin Bay with rocks, with these slow sinking lures that all had treble hooks. Yeah. So I came out with a controlled descent uh, to kind of alleviate that problem. And that's where I started. Um, And then I wanted to revisit that rattle and the tail idea, and that's where I came up with the knock and tails. Um, What's different about these is it's it's all-time rattle. So on the fall, it has action on the way down it's going to rattle yeah uh, on a steady retrieve it's going to rattle so it's kind of like a soft plastic rattle trap um when you do what you said you know like everyone wants to put rattles in the lures and they shove them in somewhere it deforms it yeah. doesn't swim straight but if you don't twitch it it doesn't rattle mm-hmm. this one if you twitch it it rattles a steady retrieve rattles as long as it's moving it's rattling yeah that's what i noticed the other day when just playing around i went bass fishing with them and and this is and this is for saltwater fishing and freshwater fishing which is the most amazing part but as soon as it hits the water that tail starts i call that a thumper tail by the way i don't know what the technical term is and i feel stupid saying that but i call it a thumper tail as soon as that tail starts thumping there is the sound is instant where right. most times you're you know you put that that rattle in there and you're you fight to where it's in the right position to make it and most of the time it's you you don't where because where you have yours there's constant motion normally when you put one in yourself you have to really give it a jerking twitching bait to make that thing that rattle work that's what's so amazing about what you have Right, and, and it's ready to go. Um, and so the, the, 
a fisherman doesn't have to do anything but put on a hook, put on a jig, however they want to fish it, and it's ready to go right out of the box. Yeah, that that's that's the even coolest part about. How long does it take to to come up with something like this? I mean, how was this? How long have you been working on this to get it to where you're now in production for these? Uh, about two years on this one, and uh, like I said, we started with the five inch, um, and with, as within any business, you run into issues you know your supplier issues your drafter issues whatever it may be so there's a lot of things and it's not it's not my full-time job yeah so um it's it's when you can get around to it so uh, i worked on this one for two years um to get it to get it finally released to the public yeah it, it's really cool now it's available i think i i looked at the website and everybody you can go to my coastal my coast outdoors.com and check this out it's available in six colors correct Correct. We have six colors now. I'm releasing another color in probably six weeks. I haven't decided what that color is yet. I'm torn between several different ones. Uh, but I'm trying to go with the most votes from my, my customers in my stores. So so the colors that you have now, because I got, I think you sent me four colors. You sent me some new penny ones. Um, I don't know what this color is. It's black and red. I guess you call it red shad. And then some white and clear and, and some, some uh, with the chartreuse on the tail too. Yeah. So what I call them, uh, so this one, I'll do it backwards. Uh, this one is, is red shad. Yep. This one we call picking on chain. It's kind of a green back silver belly and the belly glows and a chartreuse tail. Uh, white ice. It's a kind of a, a clear with a silver glitter and, and white on it. Uh, magic grass it has a purple top, a green belly and a chartreuse tail and a uh, pearl, pearl line tail. I think, uh, and I have a pumpkin seed, which I didn't grab, but anyway. Yeah. So, so that that's kind of cool, to be honest, that you're listening to your the people who are purchasing these on what colors right. they want, want to do. Because most of the time, you see these great colors and you go, oh, God, that would be, you know. No offense, I'm I'm the perfect example of you put that funky chicken uh, from a gulp on, and I'm going to look at you like there's never a fish in the right mind that has ever seen that. But that's going to attract anglers, unfortunately. I mean, that's how it works, kind of. So, right. uh, so you're getting you get you're you're get, gathering intel from your your people yeah. that are buying it. That's right. even better. Um, yeah, what I did on the first six is I kind of took my controlled descent and I took some of my popular colors from there and I started with some of those and then I asked the retailers that were carrying my controlled descents and some of my customers what they wanted that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I released these six first, these uh, colors first. And then I'll just do this all, all the way through. You know, it's basically whatever the customers want. Uh, do, have you had supply issues with this whole Corona thing? No, actually, you're completely made in the USA, aren't you? We're made in the U.S., Yes. Now, congratulations on that. That's that's something to be proud of, to be honest, especially right, right now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It it helps out a lot. Um, it just you know the whole communication side of it. Uh, when when you are dealing with your manufacturers and you go and you talk to them, you can I can go and talk to them in person if I want to very easily. Yeah. So that's that's it, it's so much easier. Tell me a little bit about the the uh, the my controlled descent stuff. How how did you how did that whole process come and tell us a, first tell us about the lures and then tell us how the process happened if you don't mind um yeah so that's that's really a good one so we are really uh 100 percent a family business um my dad actually made the molds for the control descent lures really for both of them we have um and we didn't know anything about making lures by the way yeah so we have a, a jerk shad which is a five inch straight tail jerk bait and then we have a dual paddle tail um and the control descent and like I said, I, I used to fish around the rocks and shell a lot for big trout in the wintertime. And all of these lures had treble hooks. And they cost a lot of money, and you get hung up. And one, you're not catching fish. Two, you're scaring the fish that were there because now you're yanking on it trying to get it out. Um, and then you, you lost your lure. Um, so I wanted to come up with something that I could fish weedless, and I rig all of these weedless. Um, I don't fish them on a jig head to control the scents. And uh, you get that slow sink. You, I've never lost one. In the four years I've been selling them, and the two previous years that I was designing them, I've never lost one to a snag ever. Um, so they're, they're, they're truly weedless. Um, and you get that slow sink rate. So you can catch the big trout in the winter time. Um, I fish a lot of shallow water. So yeah. I wanted a lure that I didn't have to burn it across the flat. You know, I fish, you know, 
thigh deep water or less, um, maybe 12 inches of water over the grass. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're fishing anything else, you have to burn it real fast. If the fish are active, great. If they're not, you're not going to catch them. Yeah. So I can work these at the pace that the fish want it in that skinny, uh, water column. Um, so there was nothing on the market like that. So that's why I came up with it. Um, any lures that I design are going to be something that's not out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just can't see coming out with the soft plastics that's the same as everything else on the shelf next to it. What's going to make someone buy mine versus that one? So um, that, that's why all of my lures are completely different. You'll find nothing else on the market like it. And it's stuff that I want for my fishing style. It wasn't there until I went out and made it myself. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I designed these. Um, my dad made the mold. We actually went to our, our man, the, the manufacturer that currently makes them for us now and said, hey, we want to make some lures. Um, we don't know anything about production molds. You mm -hmm. know, I, I made this, you know, six cavity mold. I'm injecting them in my garage. The lures work great. Um, so we went there. They gave us a few pointers. And uh, like I said, my dad made the first two molds. Uh, since then, he's retired. He uh, was a machinist. He retired. And uh, he didn't really want anything to do with the third one. It was going to be a little bit more complicated. And he didn't want that stress anymore. So uh, so we went out and we had that one made here uh, in the States at a, at a professional shop and paid dearly for it. Yeah, I can only imagine the getting the rattle in the tail of the lure for the knock and tails is it would be absolutely excruciating because really when you look let me get one of these out of course it snagged the it you you don't as you can see there isn't much of a it's barely bigger than the the tail itself i mean that right and and that's just cool as as hell yeah it, it was tough and, and that's that's part of what took so long to do it you know outside of the struggles of working with other people that weren't really cooperating with me um, <laughs> is getting the right design and the right durability to where it's still going to be a tough lure so yeah. you're not losing them after one or two fish but it has a lot of action because it had to have that action on the fall yeah. to really help set it apart and keep that rattle going all the time if it was a dead tail going down it wasn't going to get the effects we wanted so that took a lot of time to design the lure with the right shape um, for the plastic toughness that we wanted I will say um, I noticed right away putting so I, I rigged one with a, I think you told me to put it on a 3 16th jig head. So I put it on a hookup lure jig head to start off with. And then I then I went back to a Daiichi bleeding bait hook because I wanted it to be weedless. And I, I will tell you right off the bat, the plastic you're using is really a durable plastic. I didn't change out, of all things, sometimes I go fishing and I kind of forget to bring things with me. And in this case, I forgot to bring extra extra bait. So I only brought one bait, but I had a hook and a jig head. And I used the same thing. Didn't have any problem with it. Ran well. It tracked straight both times really well, which I re well, one of the things I, I hate is when I start looking and watching lures, I hate putting them on something, and then out of nowhere, they start tracking like, sideways or something your lures had a, a good enough durability of the plastic where it still tracked true and looked like a real bait fish right um actually one of my one of my retailers uh he when he used them for the first time he he did well he actually outfished the guy in the boat with him that was using live shrimp um so that was a good story to hear and uh what he what his comment was his favorite lure prior to using this one was he says it's a great lure, but it's really hard to rig. And until you get the touchdown, um, it, you, it's going to swim sideways. It's just not going to track right. So it really takes practice on getting it there. And what he liked about this one was it was very easy to rig. Yeah. It was very forgiving. If you're if you're off a little bit, it's still going to track straight based on the, the design. It's very symmetrical. Um, and you could rig it upside down, sideways, or top, and it's still going to swim. It's still going to track straight. Yeah. It, it, I'm looking forward to... Um, unfortunately, the day I went fishing, it was it was more of a top water. I guess it was a top water bite, you know. But I'm looking forward to putting these out uh, because I think they're the right size. I think this is. I think there should be more baits this size because big bass will target them, small bass will target them, uh, saltwater fish, your snook. There's a lot of times when you go snook fishing, and those snook are looking for those finger mullet that are exactly three or four inches. Anything that's bigger, they kind of go, oh, that doesn't look right. Why is that thing floating over my head? Uh, and they won't attack it. But I think 
this is the right that three and a half four inch size is the right size so i'm really looking forward to to putting these to the test for some for some some snook and some little juvenile juvenile tarpon too so yeah it'll be a lot yeah, of fun yeah. let me know how they hold up to the tarpon oh yeah yeah well they you know that head shaking if they stay on that hook if you have a screw lock hook i bet they stay on yeah i, I uh probably that's probably what i'll do i'll put a, a screw uh that screw lock whatever you yeah that'll probably yeah. be the way to do it but only because then you can make it kind of weed uh, well you you can kind of make it weedless is, is the goal been on the jig head so uh, i don't know if they're if they're really readily available there in florida but um in texas we have uh, i know hoagie makes one uh, anyway it's, it's a jig head and it's got the thread on it yeah so you, you just screw it on the jig head you still have the hook exposed um i love using those um, those are those are good that they, they stay on there um, i had one at the houston fishing show when i debuted these lures in march uh, they had caught 19 trout on and it was it was beat up but it was still good it was still holding on to the hook and um I keep forgetting to take it with me because I want to see how many fish I can get on it before it's finally gone. But 19 trout, that's uh, that's pretty good for soft plastic. No, that's that's phenomenal. With ICAST being not, were you going to go to ICAST this year? No, I was going to sit out this year. You were. Uh, I was going to say, because most people, I was wondering how that was going to affect your business. I mean, you have a, I was looking at a lot of people have them, you're from Texas. There's yes. a lot of, you're at a lot of stores out in, out in Texas. I was telling Michael before he even got on here, uh, I was doing the 360 in the, well, you can't see the light because I turned the light on off on my, uh, I did all the close up photos and the 360 turntable thing. Uh, so I'm in the process of, of just getting that all going. I'm going to get in the, do some underwater stuff and you'll see a closer, a closer look of these, uh, great knock and tail lures. So if you're interested, go to mycoastaloutdoors.com. Where else can they find them if they need to? Is it just there? Um, yeah, there for you know for the Florida market, um, knockandtaillures.com, uh, gettinghailed.com. It all goes to the same place, mycoastoutdoors.com. And on YouTube, we have a lot of videos. I have some pool videos there. I have a lot of catching videos. Um, so there's a lot of good information there on both product lines. You have to go to our YouTube channel at mycoastoutdoors. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. There we go. Um, I'm going to call right now David Dudley. And uh, we're going to get him in, so I'm going to run a little commercial real fast, and we'll be back. It's one thing to call yourself the ultimate power source. It's another thing to prove it. The all-new Optima Yellow Top with pure flow technology with up to three times the battery life. Unsurpassed performance built to fit today's vehicles. Optima, the ultimate power source. Our next guest is a four-time angler of the year trophy winner flw cup he's having i can't i can hear him but i can't see him yet he'll be on here in a second you can find him on his youtube channel david dudley outdoors or david dudley.com he's had 53 top 10 finishes with nine wins his sponsors include his sponsors include ranger polaris costa cuda mercury proficiency power pole Perfection Lures, A3 Anglers, Lorance, Fisherman Central, TH Marine, Anything Possible Brands, and Little Set Anglers. For incoming call. Uh, he, I can hear you, David. Can you hear me? I can't see you, but I can hear you. Uh, I don't know if he, he was on. I can hear you, but can you hear me? I, I can hear you, but can you hear me, David? Oh, we had we had it working earlier, and then out of nowhere, um, it well, it's not working. I don't know there's what. There's the video. Okay, hold on. He said, "There's the video." We have David Dudley. Um, hold on, okay. but I just texted him. Hopefully, we'll get this resolved fairly Unmute fast. Unmute for incoming calls. Oh. Yeah. Unmute. It's muted. No, no, you're unmute. <laughs> Uh, we had it working a few minutes ago in the middle of this uh, the, the the tape thing and I also got a hold of JC drop shot so maybe we can get a hold of him after we're done figuring this out for David oh, he can hear us but he can't see us yes so we got to clean that it turn video on there how about now can you see me now not yet ah So I'm going to run a commercial while this is happening and try to figure this out with him. Hold on.
Introducing Shimano DC Braking. I'm Digital telling you. control will provide trouble free casting to all angles. DC will greatly improve the casting and therefore the fishing experience for anglers of all skill levels. I don't make long. I can see him. Casts, regardless of wind speed or direction. Well, he DC just, break provides trouble free casting with a wide range of lures by right, simply adjusting the external dial. Even challenging I can't hear casts you. are now within reach for all anglers. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Nope. I'm reading your lips. <laughs> the newest innovation <laughs> in braking <laughs> systems. Shimano <laughs> DC brake. This? Huh? Do you have headphones in? Hopefully he can hear me now. David, can you hear me? I can see you and he I can hear you, but you can't hear me. I can't hear you. Okay. I, I don't know. Do you? I'm going to text you. Do you have headphones in? Hold on. I'm just. I'm texting him. Does he have headphones? Look at how great his background looks, by the way. I have. Uh, I can hear him. I can see hear him. Hear him. But if he can't hear my head, hear me, then that doesn't help us at all. Um, he was able to hear me earlier, but I don't know what happened. Do I wonder if uh, you want to? Know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna call you back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Call you back. Yeah, I'm gonna call you right back. Hold on. Let's all try. Right. I'm gonna try this again. What the hell? What the hell? <sighs> Let's hope. I got you. Now I. You can hear me? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Let me do my introduction again. Four-time angler. Just sit back and eat your those crackers while, I, while I've been thinking about how many fish you told me you caught earlier, by the way. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Four-time Angler of the Year trophy winner. Four FLW Cup champion. You can go to his YouTube channel, David Dudley Outdoors. Check him out on daviddudley.com. 53 top 10 finishes, 9 wins. His sponsors include Ranger, Polaris, Costa, Cuda, Mercury, Proficiency, Powerpole, Perfection Lures, A3 Anglers, A3 Angler, Lawrence, Fisherman Central, TH Marine, Anything Possible Brands, and Little Anglers. He just joined Major League Fishing. He put an absolute ass whooping on him yesterday while he's filming. David Dudley, how are you, sir? Nice to finally meet you and, and see you live in person. I know. Yeah, we've talked a lot on the phone, and um, I'm doing good, especially since the shad bite's going on. It's been a, it's been a fun couple weeks for sure. And then yesterday I, I had a monumental day. It was with, in the boat. Officially, it touched the carpet 103. Not what jumped and got off, not what missed. Like it couldn't, it, you couldn't count it unless it touched the carpet. So 103 came in the boat by lunchtime on a shad bite at Bugs Island. It was awesome. That is unbelievable. Is that like one of the best days you've ever been out there fishing? Yeah, it was, it was really, yeah. It was, without a doubt, it's the best late day I've ever had on Bugs Island as far as numbers. We went this morning and, uh, in four hours, we put 54 in the boat. Jeez, that's yeah. unbelievable, man. Yeah, that's Sam Plain numbers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's unbelievable. How did you get introduced into the outdoors? How did you, did your dad take you fishing? Did your grandpa take you fishing? How did you get introduced? Yeah, my dad, he was a fisherman, and, you know, he started taking us as kids, and I got two other brothers, and, and uh, you know, just... I was the one that caught the bug out of, out of, you know, the family. Yeah. And it just, it's something that, you know, you know how it is. It's like, you can't all, everybody's different. And the bug just happened to catch me. And I watched things on TV and I was like, you know, I'm going to do that one day. I want to make my living fishing. I took it serious. And, and so, you know, here I am at 44 years old and, 
and making a living fishing and and enjoying life. How did you you made you made this big jump this year? You went from FLW back over to Major League Fishing. Was it a tough decision to, to join that? No. No. Very easy. no. Yeah. Station. Um you know, MLF is new and I think most of your probably most of your viewers know about it and it's it's uh you know just like anything else you have growing pains with anything you start up you know yeah and uh you know their 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 goal is is a is a great goal you know making professional fishing truly where you can make a living without paying entry fees and you know just like any any startup business you know they've went through some growing pains but the what's behind it is is tremendous and like I know now after being with MLF what's in store in the future, and I can tell you right now if 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 I was an up and coming angler, and I wasn't fishing the FLW Pro Circuit, you're 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 pretty much a fool, you know, because what they got coming up is unbelievable, you know. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm excited. Did does fishing, major league fishing, not having that entry fee. Does that take a stress off you when you when you get out there fishing when you start the the tournament? Does it take any stress off you? Oh, of course. I mean, when you're not putting up your own money, you know, to fish and you you got a chance to get a a, a high check, you know, that's that's always good, you know. But the I've never really looked at money. I mean, I think when you're you know when you're a competitor. Uh, Money is not your drive. Uh, com- competition is your drive, and money will follow. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you focus on competition and doing as best as you can do. I'm not. Money is never an equate. You know, I don't focus on. Hey, even when in my brokest time, when I won 2010 Angler of the Year, sold all my rods just to get enough money to make it to Florida, ended up winning Angler of the Year. I still am competitive to drive, you know, competitiveness is what drives me, not money. So. Yeah, that's awesome, actually. Well, it's, it's sad to hear 2010, but you won, still won Angler of the Year. That brings a little bit of money in. Um, what are your thoughts on, you guys only have two more tournaments for the rest of the year. I mean, we're used to seeing eight or nine or at least eight, and now they kind of cut the season short because of all this craziness that's going on in, in the in the world right now. Yeah, no, we, we got five on the schedule, uh, kind of, um, there, they opened up heavy hitters to, you know, the whole league and, you know, we got three, they're letting, um, we're joining in with the FLW tour oh. on their super tournament. So we, that added three more. So we're, we're actually got a pretty full schedule coming up on us. So, uh, it's a lot of opportunity to make some money for sure. Are you looking forward to coming down here to Florida again? I mean, I missed you in Okeechobee. I was looking for you in Okeechobee, but man, it was that was a weird. Uh, that was before all the the craziness. But man, you guys were like in and out of those, in and out of the afternoons faster than anything. But are you looking forward to coming? Are you do you like fishing down here in Florida? Um, yeah, I like Florida fishing, but we've always come in you know January or February. yes. So I have no clue. I know we're going to be sweating like crazy oh yeah be hot, blah blah and you know i have no idea what to expect so um i'm just gonna go down there with an open mind like i do everywhere else i don't research lakes i don't study internet and i don't read fit i just hey where are we going oh, okay we're going to Kissimmee. all right let me pack some florida stuff in let's get the games on you know i, I go in with an open mind and so i don't know anything about it but I'm looking forward to it. I'm always looking forward to going to Florida. You know, you always got a chance. I don't think Florida, of course, Florida's overrated with the giant, giant bass. Yeah. But yeah. it's got an overwhelming abundance of, you know, five to eight pounders, you know. And that's any anytime you've got a chance to catch one five to eight pounds, that's always exciting. Yeah. What's your biggest bass you've ever caught? 914. Nine? I've never had a double-digit bass. 
Now, you usually come down here during the winter, I thought. When I talked to Duke, he said you're usually down here for a couple weeks or two or three weeks to see your brother or someone. You never get the big ones yeah. when you're down here? Nope. 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 I never caught a double digit. Um, I'd always go and visit my brother who lives there in Lake Marion. Uh, he lives on Lake Marion. And, you know, I, of course, when you're cooped up in the winter and you're thinking about fishing, hunting's over, you always want to get down to Florida early just for the fun of it. So I always go down and stay around a little bit down there. But, you know, now that we're going in June and July, I don't know so much I'm oh, looking forward to that. It's going to be it, – the heat is hell, dude. Seriously, the heat is hell. But – hopefully you guys hopefully the fishing's pretty good because i think well truthfully we've had this whole quarantine but there's been even more people out there fishing right now so it might be kind of tough for you but you know it's fishing i mean that's what it is i know i it's it's kind of weird like i think the lakes have gotten more pressure <laughs> from this quarantine than could, on an average year no I, doubt i like, think you're dead right yeah ain't no like i just got done fishing this morning and boat ramps are full you know back before this i mean typically if there was a weekend tournament you start to see some people trickle in on a friday you know thursday maybe but no every day is gas is mm. cheap we're off of work you know and it's like a no-brainer let's go yeah, yeah, well, yeah, the, the the gas being less has helped quite a bit, but everyone being cooped up in their house, they're like, well, fishing is allowed. Even in Florida, they're saying, go fish, do some, get outdoors, do something. <clears throat> How long has it been? When when did you start the YouTube channel? A uh, little over a year ago, and that's been a fun adventure. Learning, you know, it's a it's been a learning curve trying to figure out this YouTube thing. I just know with sponsors, uh, you know, it, YouTube is such a powerful, uh, uh, mar you know, even marketing or just a way to talk to your fan base. But think about this, like on average, and I, I'm not that big, you know, and I hope to grow, but I, I've grown twenty about 26,000 su subscribers in one year. No, you're killing and it in one year. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm not, not, yeah, I've done good, Yeah, you know, so I've, I've grown 26,000 in one year, but uh, it's, you know, on a weekly basis, like, if I told a sponsor, hey, um, I'm going to go talk to an auditorium of, you know, let's just say I'm averaging 50,000 views a week, hey, if I told you I was going to speak in an auditorium of 50,000 people, would that excite you? Or an auditorium of, you know, it doesn't matter. It, I think, you know, sponsors now are turning, you know, they're coming around and seeing the power of YouTube and and and, and the sales and, and how you can promote through YouTube. So that's pretty much why I started it was for sponsorship. Yeah. No, no, you've been doing, the videos are great. You've been doing great. To think you've moved up 24, 26,000, whatever it is. I think when you and I first talked, you were at like the, I think like six or 8,000. And I was like, oh, you're doing great now. And then out of nowhere, you've just exploded uh, out there. And that's great to see. And, and you're putting out good content too, which is also very good too. I think, well, I mean, you're not going to grow if you don't put out con good content. You know, that's like if, if people that want to come, if you get out good content, people are going to want to come back and soak that up, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, that's the key to anything is just giving good content. So. so Major League Fishing has done an absolute great job at putting out these almost daily during the week fishing, little minor fishing tournaments. Is there, are you in line to do one of those uh, anytime soon on the Major League Fishing channel? Because I haven't seen you on there yet. Yeah, no, I want to get old uh, Jacob Prosnick, challenge him to ah. a little derby out there. That would be real a lot of fun. Yeah. I, w I was thinking you and Brian Thrift would be really good, too, especially since you two just moved into it. It might be good to have a, a competition against Brian. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, I either one of them. It would be a lot of fun, no doubt. He, you know, Brian. He's. I, m- I might actually take him on and say, hey, I'll come up to Lake Norman and I'll take him on in his home water. That would be a fun challenge. <laughs> see, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. I, I I would watch that all day. I mean, today they had Edwin and Jason fishing against each other. They used to be, they still might be like, you know, they split rooms and the whole nine yards. They're like partners on, on, the, on, the, the, t- on the, the tournament trail. So uh, it, it's always fun to see there. Uh, how hard is it to, to leave the family and, and, uh, get out there and go fishing? I mean, it sounds, you have a son, I think. Yeah, no, we got five, we had five kids in Dude. six years. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we got a big family. So and, you had plenty uh, of time. <laughs> yeah. Think about my career though. My, most of my career was, uh, six, tur- six, you know, FLW was six tournaments uh, and then a championship. So seven tournaments a year. Now they bumped it up to seven tournaments a year and with a championship. Yeah. But think about this. I, I think the biggest misconception of fishermen is that we're on the road traveling and we're just, you know, missing our families and all. No, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> I am a, I like, so Let's just say it's eight tournaments now, plus a championship, nine, okay? 52 weeks. I'm a stay-at-home dad for 42 weeks a year. Yeah. 42 weeks a year, I am with my children 24-7. Now, think about a guy who works a nine-to-five job. He leaves before his kids get up for breakfast. Yep. He comes back five or six. The wife might be doing homework with them. And then he might get one hour of quality time with his kid. Mm -hmm. So a guy who works a nine to five job is less around his kids than I am. So basically, yeah, let's say I try, let's just exaggerate. Let's say I'm on the road 10 weeks a year. (laughs) I'll take 42 (laughs) weeks around my kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's a no brainer. So it's a big. You know, there's some people... A misconception. Go, yes, absolutely. Like, you know, it's just... Now, when we're home, we might be work, but I'm around my kids, you know, homeschooled. I'm a stay-at-home dad. Dude, you that's know, awesome. I, I do travel, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'll take, I'll take my job any day. I'm Now, it's, you know, it's extended periods of times. I, I love what I do. I think it's a big misconception, you know... The guys that the single guys might travel a lot, but for the most part, I you know, I, it's it's a phenomenal job, and I'm I love what I do, and I'm I'm home more than a nine to five guy working any day of the year. Yeah, that that's awesome. So I know you filmed yesterday. How often how often are you put you putting up a video every week, or are you putting up one or two videos every week? Oh, so you're yeah. you're really busy getting the stuff out. Yeah. Every Monday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, so yeah, we're we're pumping out three videos a week, and it's hard, you know. It's I'm making no money at it. Don't you know? I don't hold no bones about it. I go in the hole every month making videos. Yeah. But you know, like any startup business, yeah, you want to make money on it. There was a guy who commented, and I did a video, and I was just talking, and I said, uh. You know, I was describing what the lure does up underneath water. Mm-hmm. And he goes, prove it. I'm like, dude, I don't have a $200,000 <laughs> pool. I don't, I don't have a, a, you know, I go in the hole every month doing this. I'm dedicating my time to give you guys info. I gain nothing out of it, you know, and it's like, you're going to sit there and ask for me to go edit underwater footage so you can see it no trust me you know it's like (laughs) well get so oh Oh, they're crazy i I, we've been doing our channel for a year we're not half as not even a quarter as well as successful as you are but we we've been just doing videos that are looks at video at uh lures and doing that kind of stuff and i know from just from my end of it how hard it is to edit and graphics and everything it's a nightmare yeah 
And it, you always have these keyboard warriors that just think they know everything, unfortunately, and, and always have some smart ass remark. I mean, uh, some of my block and you know, that's just, that's just how it is. It, it's, it's a nightmare. I don't think, you know, for the <clears throat> most part, there's all you know, I'm going to say 95%. And I think you'll agree, you know, the people that watch, they're cool people, man. Yes. You always got, you know, one, always a couple. And I think their intentions sometimes, you know, that guy who was talking, I don't think his intentions were, I think he just, hadn't given a thought about how much time and dedication that we put to this channel to just, you know, let people know what's up and, you know, some information. And I don't, I don't think there, a lot of them are ill heartedly. I just think they just don't think about what they're saying sometimes. And, you know, it's, I got, I feel I got some of the greatest fans in the world. You yeah. know, I do. I love the people that follow my channel and, and it's been a it's been a good uh, no doubt good roller coaster of a ride uh, with it you know learning as you go and then you put out a video and you're like what the heck man I spent five hours on the water <laughs> mm -hmm. six hours, hours editing, editing <laughs> and then you put it out and you get like ten you know whatever <laughs> not many views yes and you're like man. And then you spend like 30 minutes on one and throw it out quick and fast and it's like psh, it explodes and you're like, I don't understand it. It's like fishing. You know, you just keep casting and casting and Hoping some of the that. videos do well, yep. some of them don't. You just got to keep putting them out. Well, you keep on putting them out because you've been killing it and we're, I I'm so glad to finally meet you. Uh, if you had one, one, two, two more questions, I'll let you go because I know you were on the water and I want you to. To, to see the family and the whole nine yards bucket list fish where what is it and bucket list place to go fishing actually i might be heading down to florida um the number one bucket list fish right now well the one was always a halibut i just enjoyed flounder fishing my whole life i saw a halibut you know and i was like i conquered that last year of course in alaska and then my second number one bucket list fish is a bonefish. Really? I, yep. I want a bonefish. I want to, I've just seen them caught on TV. They look tricky. You know, they look challenging. It's sight fishing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just want a bonefish. And then next in line is a tarpon, which I know this is tarpon season. And I got an invite to go down there, of course. And hopefully I can go down there and catch some. I got a spot if you come to, you'll be in my neck in Orlando. If you want to go tarpon fishing, they're not giants. They're the ones that are, they're up to 20 pounds and they're little juvenile ones and they thump and they, you probably will only catch one or two out of every 10. They absolutely crush it. So when you get down here, I'm sure I'm going to see you. I, I sent in a, a request to be media up at the heavy hitters. Yeah. So I'm sure Trisha, I'm not sure what Trisha, she's probably slam busy, but uh, I'm sure she'll get back to me here fairly soon, hopefully. And and then hopefully we can say hello, but if you're interested in going, I'll, I'll at worst case scenario, I'll tell you where to go and you can go out there and try it yourself. Mm -hmm. Bonefish, yep. a little bit tougher. I got to be honest. If you want to go for a bonefish, bonefish down in the Keys is really tough fishing because they're real sketchy, but once... You, once you get one of those on, you're going to go, the, the, exactly what happened to me is, why am I bass fishing? Because, yeah. man, the pull that those things do and the runs after run after run is well, unbelievable. They can't, but one, they can't go down and fight. No, they you're right. Dig. There ain't but one direction they can go because they're in this deep of water. Yeah. It's straight away from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I'm excited. I want to, I don't know, I just watched them on tv growing up as a kid and just thought they were neat and challenging saltwater is my passion that's my number one fishing passion really yeah i was a saltwater guide for nine years uh i lived at the outer banks of north carolina red fishing up, yep redfish stripers speckled trout of course trout everything yeah sure you know and uh that's that's my passion I, I love saltwater fishing, so uh, bass fishing is just like, 
you know, my second passion. But what, what, I'll take salt water any day. What made you, I didn't know that, but what made you decide to, you were a guide for years, then to make it in, to try to, to make that switch over into bass and become a professional angler? What, how did that all collide? Well, it goes back to, it actually goes back to uh, what we discussed earlier. Six, seven weeks a year. What am I going to do uh, for a job? Yeah. So uh, I grew up traveling, going to the beach as a kid. And, you know, we'd saw a lot of fish. And I started going down there. And I was like, I needed a job in between my tournaments. So <laughs> I uh, I moved down there, bought a house, and started a guide business. And for nine years, we still have a house down there and go back there fishing but I, I cannot guide for bass. Like, <laughs> no way. Yeah. I mean, unless I was shiner fishing. But yeah. if I had to go around and coach people day after day after day on how to catch a bass, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want <laughs> nothing of it. You know? But I do, you know, what I do now for bass fishing is I actually do coaching trips, which yeah. is, uh, it's where people who are ready to take the next step. Um, you know, you talk about having a back and batting coach and swing, you know, there's coaches for everything. And it's been a great thing. Like I've got to, I coach three people and I'll never give your names, their names, but I coach three people on a national tour. Really? Right yeah, sure do. That's three unbelievable. Right and so these people who come to me, we just go out on the water and when we're out on the water fishing, I try to get them to look through my eyes. And, you know, it's everything from watching. It could be their approach or their thought process and, you know, make them making decisions. And I help, you know, it's like a fishing consultant. I consult them in how to become a better angler. And it's been, it's been, fa I don't even have it. You can find it on my website, but I don't push it much because uh, I've got enough you know, coaching with people that it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fun thing to me. It's rewarding because when I watch them, well, I yeah. got three on the national tour, but a lot on the, the, you know, smaller tours, yeah. but it's cool yeah. to watch them accelerate, you know, and it's like, I'm, I'm cheering for my, you know, students per se yeah. that yeah. It, it's, it's awesome. Is yeah. there, when you when you're helping someone like that and they're new, is there one thing that you see that uh, all three of them did that was just something you go, okay, this is something you all need to do uh, that's going to help you become a better angler? Does that make sense? Was there like were they not casting properly? Were they not reading the lake well? Were they only were they always constantly stuck in one using one or two lures and not opening up the range of what they're doing? Is that Keep going. It's all that kind keep of stuff. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. And it, it, it's pretty cool because, uh, you know, it, when I first get with somebody on the, you know, first that time I meet them or first trip, you know, basically it's, hey, like if I was a basketball coach, I can't coach you unless I watch you play. Right? Yeah. So it's, so the first couple hours I just say, go fishing. Like, just go fishing. And I watch them, and of course they get nervous and little, you know. And I try to make them feel as comfortable as they can, and you know, then we just start rewinding, and I start. I take notes myself for reminders, and then we go back. And once I start explaining it to them, it's amazing. It's it's totally amazing how much they're just they get quiet, and they realize. Yeah, that was yeah, dumb. yeah. You know? And but it's so cool on the, the other end of it because you you just watch them soak, and and a lot of it's just things that they've never been told. And you get these, you know, you a lot of times in fishing because you talk about it. What separates a good angler from a bad angler, right? Yeah, you know why is. Well, fishing is not luck because the same people come out on top year after year after year. But what separates a lot of it is the decisions that you make on the water. And there's always the thing I, in, in fishing. There's one thing in life you cannot teach is instinct. Yeah. You can't teach instinct. But 
you can uh, you can um, definitely learn out on the water with yourself and become a better angler for there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, everyone, you got to check out his YouTube channel. It's fabulous. Check him out online. Uh, root for him. Go on Facebook. Become a fan. Follow David. Uh, I was told by Ken Duke you were the nicest guy in the world. You have lived up to that that right off the bat from, I like to call him Kenneth Allen Duke. So that is, I that's that's great. So thank he you. He is the stat man, ain't he? Oh, that God. Dude, like you could say, whatever. Hey, what did uh, Denny Brower have <laughs> in 1983 Classic and what place did he come in? I don't know. He'd be like, yeah, well, Denny had 19 pounds, three yeah. ounces in the third day, and then he came back the next day and broke two off on a jig yeah. with a black and blue green pumpkin trailer, and he only had 11 pounds, seven ounces, but he finished he finished sixth place in that classic. I, I, He's amazing. I make fun of him. I always say that he knows so much, he knows what kind of underwear y'all were wearing the day of the tournament. That's well, well, no, mine because I haven't wore a pair of underwear since the eighth grade. <laughs> that yeah, I'm telling Ken, cousin Ken that when we get off this thing. Yeah, no uh, underwear since the eighth grade. Dude, uh, I really appreciate the time. I'm going to see you. I'll make sure I text you when I'm on my way down to Kissimmee. Let's at least say hello or. I'll buy you dinner or something when you're down here. I love, I appreciate everything you're doing for this. And, and if there's anything I can ever do to help you out, you have, we, you know, we'll talk and I'll do anything I can, but everyone go check out his YouTube channel, check out his Facebook page, check out everything. He's David Dudley just joined major league fishing this year. I have a feeling that even though this is a short year, I got a feeling you'll see him in the top two or three in the next couple of years in major league fishing and making a run for angler of the year against all these guys. Cause I'm looking forward to him putting it in their face, to be honest. I hope you're right. <laughs> and I appreciate the kind words. And thank you. Thank you, man. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Okay. Later, Bye. dude. Bye. I have to say might've been one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. That is the God's honest truth. Now, David and I have had a lot of, I should say, we've talked a lot. David and I have talked a lot before this, but that right there was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. Okay, I am going to attempt to get a hold of J.C. Dropshot, Justin Clark. I can't promise anything. He did try to get connect, so he obviously wanted to get on here, and I need to make sure I do it. So while I put on another commercial, I don't think I've done the Costa Del Mar commercial, so I'm going to do the Costa Del Mar commercial. Let me first off, let me get him ready, <clears throat> and let me call him. So you'll, I'll see you in a few seconds. I am trying Justin right now. I'm hoping that he'll answer the phone. He is Justin Clark from JC Drop Shot. I was disappointed at the beginning because I hadn't heard from him, but obviously he's tried to get a hold of us. I don't know if we're going to get a hold of him, so maybe we'll try again at another point in time. But uh, <clears throat> but really, I'm really kind of excited over that last one, to be honest. That one was David Dudley was arguably one of the my favorite people i've ever talked to on any of this and if you've missed any of the the stuff that we've done on the radio show we've had all sorts of people from kevin van dam to edwin evers to um bill dance to roland martin to all i mean there's my phone is loaded with a majority of the anglers the professional anglers and that one might have been one of the better ones and one that I was confused about too because I didn't know he was a guide and I do a lot of research if you didn't never seen there's a there's a lot of research that goes into doing all this stuff as my wife is calling me 
Um, I'm going to try JC one more time real fast and run one more commercial, and we'll see uh, if we can't uh, get a hold of JC Justin Clark. Hold on. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about tackle webs. With tackle webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com. Well, I'm still trying to try JC. He texted me saying that he was available. He was running an errand for his wife. Um, my wife is texting me at the same time, which obviously she doesn't realize that there's this going on. So... <clears throat> That is what it is. We have a lot, I should mention, we have unbelievable amount of new tackle coming into um, our stuff. Why does it say not delivered? Uh, uh, hold on. Here we go. Hold on. We might have JC drop shot right now. Lots What's of stuff. Up? I don't see you, but I hear, oh, yes, there you are. I get my headphones and I was out mowing the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were ditching me, dude. No, dude. So my day job, I'm a sales rep for a fishing tackle distributor. Well, we're, we're live, by the way. I should That's mention fine. that. That's all right. That's fine. I just can't mention the company. How about that? Yeah, that, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you, can, you can mention anything you want. I just don't want you to get in, in trouble. Yeah. So the stores are starting to open back up in Michigan. It's like, ah, oh, craziness. We need product. So, yeah. <laughs> if you're new, if you haven't watched him, he has a special channel, as I try to find all my notes about you, by the way. His channel is JC Drop Shot. He's in Michigan. You can go to JC Drop Shot on YouTube and find him. He does a podcast off the dock every, what is it, every week? Are you just starting that? The goal is every other Saturday, but with COVID and everybody's schedules being all jacked up, it's been all over the place right yeah, now. Yeah, I can understand that. You were a fishing guide at one point in time, and now you've jumped into yeah. the YouTube channel. Uh, but before that was we, a long time ago. That was, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me first start off by saying, how did you get introduced into the outdoors? How did it, how did it, how did it start for you? Well, I'm, I'm live in Michigan, so hunting and fishing is just what we do. Yeah, I mean, even in the Metro Detroit area, you grow up at least fishing. Hunting, yes. not so much, but fishing definitely. So, dad took me, grandpa took me, farm ponds, all that good stuff, camping trips, you know, all that usual. You know, going fishing. Yeah. Now I'm taking my dad and teaching him how to fish better. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I grew up in Michigan, too. Oh, that's awesome. I grew up in Howell, Michigan. But here's the weirdest thing about in in doing some research about you, since you like to fish Lake St. Clair. Every summer, I would go spend the week the summer with my two sisters at Harsons Island in Algonac. What part? Uh, on the island itself, okay, uh, and um, that's kind of how I how I got introduced into fishing. To be honest, I'd go walleye fishing or smallmouth fishing, or really a lot of perch fishing, and that's how I got my love for the outdoors. Was being at my grandma's house with my sisters and my cousins on Algonac. Nice. I I love going up and fishing the canals and stuff in Harsons because not a lot of guys do it anymore since they shut down all the shore fishing. Oh. So there's a lot of untapped, uncharted waters now. You could say, yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. We have uh, last time I was up there. It was it was a long time. So as because this has been bothering me since I uh, since I found out you're in Michigan and the whole nine yards. So I need to know right off the bat: Are you a Lafayette Coney Island person or are you an American Coney Island person? Neither. La Pumas, Rochester, Michigan, buddy. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best Coney in Michigan to me. Is it? Yes. So yes, I, I love theirs. So, but 
being that I'm not a Detroiter because I yeah. grew up in Monroe. Yeah. Chili dogs over Coney dogs all day long. Yeah. I asked Kevin Van Dam every time I've had him on this radio show. And every time he tells me he's never been or heard of Lafayette or American Coney Island. And I tell him he's not really a Michigander if he hasn't heard of either one of them. <laughs> well, he's on the <clears throat> southwest corner. So they actually got a good Coney dog over there. It's not really, it's like a Coney dog and a chili dog kind of combo. GL something. Mm. And when I go to like Muskegon Lake or around the Grand Rapids area, I try to find them. It's a little chain. Delicious. Really, really, really good. We don't have anything yeah. like that down here. We have just, excuse my French, shit hot dogs. I know I'm not supposed to swear, but it was, they're horrible shit hot dogs. Most corny, most. Coney dogs look like dog food on hot dogs. <laughs> they, <laughs> Most of them they, do. They really do. You hit it right on the right on the thing. Okay. Some even smell like it. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> how how long for people who don't know you? How long have you been doing the YouTube channel? Uh seriously, about two two and a half years. But I've always threw up videos when I was writing my vlog and doing some outdoor writing. Um, I would throw up a random video every now and again back in the day, but. Was there yeah. what, what what got you started into doing YouTube? Was there something that happened, or was it something you just saw a need for? Because uh, you're the the videos you're putting out a couple of videos a, a week, it seems like, and you're also even amping it up. It seems like you even do you have some production crew that's even doing the editing and stuff? Um, I do probably ninety nine percent of everything myself. Okay, like me. Up in, yeah, up until recently, I actually got a gentleman, um, a local, I don't know how old he is. Um, he's actually a kayak angler. He won the first FLW kayak event. Oh. Uh, so guys might know him, Bogdan. And he basically sold off a bunch of boats and goes, hey, I want to do social media content producing. He doesn't want to be in front of the <clears> camera, even though he has a YouTube channel, which is Kayak Outbreak. Yeah. And he's like, dude, I got these cameras. I need practice. I said, do you want to do some filming with me? And He's been doing the editing on the product review, the SLX XT video. He did the editing on that. He did the videoing on it um, with my stuff that I got to have in there, obviously, that I want. Yeah. Um, and I like his style. I've been trying to find somebody to work with to help with more elaborate projects I've been wanting to do. Oh, that's cool. I can't wait to see Cause, those. Because it's hard to self-shoot, honestly, everything that you could think of. Oh, doing. that's so. all I do. It's self-shoot, and I come home and edit. Uh, you know, it's it's a nightmare, to be honest. Yep. <clears throat> and a lot of guys don't know this. Almost all of my YouTube videos are 100% shot on GoPros. Yes. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But if you set the camera right, most people don't recognize it, unless you're astute to the quality of the shots you'll get with a with a no normal camera versus a GoPro. You know, certain lighting situations kind of mess with you a little bit. But I kind of like that. It's just simple, cheap. If I lose it, it's not a giant, you know, $2,000, $3,000 bill over the side of the boat. Yeah. It's only a couple hundred bucks. So. I, I've lost – I recently lost a GoPro Haven't fishing. Had it happen, I've, yeah. I lost one with uh, my buddy Ken Duke. We went fishing, and of all things, I, uh, I put it in the wrong place, and I just – tried to unbuckle it you know it had the suction cup things and i bumped mm. it at the same time and it went over and and i didn't ken was really worried he's like let's dive in the water and we'll go after it and i'm like first off that water is filthy and it and not that it's not that we have horrible cold water during the winter but it was january so it was probably 40 or 50 degrees and, cool. and yeah and i was not getting in that water i was not i was like look i'll buy a new one but that's all right it was my mistake that's just that's just part of it. <clears throat> um, so you're, you're putting out how many videos do you do you do you try to put up out every week? Is it one or two? I try one to three is one is always my goal. No matter what, I'm putting up one because you got to be consistent with with the algorithm as much as you possibly can. Yeah. But occasionally, my day job does get in the way, and there's some lag that happens. So I've always tried to batch and get ahead, but it never seems to work yeah. out. <laughs> it, 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 you can hope for it, but it never really yeah. works out that well. Uh, tell me about you. You you're on the Monster Bass Pro Staff, aren't you? I'm not. A, I'm not sure if I'm brand ambassador or pro staff. I have no idea, but I've been there since the beginning of everything with them. Um, I actually was purchasing the box right from the get go for the first three months. Yes. Um, and Ben, who was part of it up until recently. Um, is another Michigan YouTuber, Benjamin Nowak. And, you know, he was kind of part of the reason why I decided to be 
you know, be part of the company and help them out and promote them because I liked what they were doing. Yeah. Um, it's definitely better for the more experienced anglers than, say, like a mystery or a lucky tackle box where it's a little bit more geared towards the the kid that may not know anything at all. Yeah. Um, just introduce them to everything possible that's out there. But Monster Bass still does that, but gets a little more to your region, to your time of the year, you know, in a, in a more concise sense. So, yeah, yeah. I saw if that even makes sense, but yeah. no, 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 I, I agree <laughs> with you completely. There's, there is a drastic difference and they really have, they've really, really st- had to make everybody else step up their game to be honest. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing mystery do the Guggen boxes. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, so they're doing that. Um, I know we have, uh, the Brandon Polinick takeover box coming up, mm-hmm. which he's going to have the soft plastic selection. Rapala has been, from my understanding, a little hard to get a hold of and get in front of to put them in the Brandon Polinick box. It would be awesome to have some Storm Baits and some Rapala Baits in there, uh, but that won't happen, I don't think, in time, unfortunately. But I know there's some more takeover box. There's a frog box coming, I think, in yep. August. Yep, I heard that uh, one. Soft water's all frog, so that's, that's going to be huge. I keep pushing for the Zoom Horny Toad. To be in there, like every time he brings up Zoom Horny Toad, he goes, "That's the only thing you throw. It's the only thing you need to throw. <laughs> <laughs> you need nothing else." So, what is your fa- looking to that. what is your favorite style of bait fishing? I, uh, f- uh, do you generally go smallmouth fishing up there, or are you a largemouth fisherman more or less? Saint Clair is makes smallmouth fishing unfun and fun at the same time because you get big ever- ones. You get big ones, but St. Clair can make you very humble very quick and more often than not. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get out of the spring, the spring is easy. That's why so many people come up here in May and June and enjoy that, that spawn bite in, when all these fish are shallow. But when that July, August, September bite happens, oh, it'll humble the heck out of you. Yeah. <laughs> so when that stuff happens, just give me a large mouth and I'm good. We call, we call, I like to call them ditch pickles for a reason. Yeah. So they're pretty easy. You just don't, you don't have to go back in the canals and go find them. Um, but there is some largemouth waters on St. Clair that guys have not touched. Oh. You know, the Walpole area, which is similar to Harsons, but way less developed. And I would say that's very similar to being down in the glades. Oh. You know, for you down where you're at, you can get, you know, we have big, huge reed beds that are 16 foot tall. You can't see anything other than what's in front of you. So it's kind of fun. I lost probably my biggest largemouth in my life. What is there your last summer? What is your biggest largemouth? Just out of curiosity, seven two. Okay, nice fish for Michigan. For Michigan, that's huge. Lake Erie, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, that's like and, that's like a twelve yeah. down here. Yeah, <clears throat> and I caught two six pounders off that same dock two casts before that fish. Nice. Never will I ever duplicate those three casts ever in my life again. That was epic. Are are your fish right now in like the spawn phase or have they spawned out up there right right now? There I mean, is on some of the inland lakes we do have males posting up in, you know, garden areas. Females I think are probably a week or two on some of, on those inland lakes to getting going. Uh St. Clair, we are still too cold for "Quote unquote spawn." Uh-huh. Uh, everything is still still pre spawn, but we're starting to see a few males kind of get a little, little territorial on certain spots. But they're still very pre spawn, still roaming, still feeding heavily. Yeah, I saw a recent uh, one of your off the dock podcasts. I forgot who it was with. Oh, I forgot it, it was a, like a Swedish. Uh, I don't even. You'd think I'd have it right here, but I don't. Swin side. Yes, uh, he's with. He is not Swedish. He's he, not Swedish. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's a Muslim name, I believe, actually. Oh, is it? He's with, uh, what company is he with? Duo Realis. Yes, I just did did a new review on the Duo Realis, that Boostar Wake Swim Bait on our channel. That little bait is really nice, really nice. It looks nice. I have not got them in my hands yet to fish them, so I need to. Great tail on them, great action, and kind of like the right size that three and a half inch size um yep. gr- great 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 bait you'll have to i'm sure you'll get some they're 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 pretty wonderful um <clears throat> bucket list fish and bucket list place to go fishing where would it be and what fish is it bucket list fish oh boy um all of them that i haven't caught <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I was supposed to go to Texas Choke Canyon. I've yet to catch a Florida bass. What? So I've yet to catch a Florida bass. Every time I go to Florida, I go saltwater fishing. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? What? <laughs> when you come down here for salt, do you, you come down here for iCast? Don't you? Do you come down here for iCast? I have not gotten to iCast. This is supposed to be the. Oh. This is supposed to be the first year of it. <laughs> they canceled it. Yeah, of course. Year. I mean, why? Um, why, why not? <laughs> You're the reason <laughs> you canceled it. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably they heard me come and they were they got scared um no uh we usually do like inshore stuff down in florida flounder redfish trout yeah you know, snappers in the fall and stuff like the mangrove snappers and stuff in the fall yeah um sarasota bay area yeah redfish uh, that kind of stuff's really a lot of fun after you've catched I, I was just talking to david dudley he wants to go bone fishing every time you catch a saltwater fish you kind of go when you catch a largemouth, you go, "Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm in the. I'm. Why am I going after these fish?" A two pound Spanish mackerel is a lot of fun on light tackle. Yeah, you know, you fish it on your normal spinning tackle that you fish for bass with, and have just have a lot of line capacity, and you're good. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully next. Are you? I, I hopefully you're making plans to get down here next year for iCast if they everything works out right. Yeah, I, I don't think this is going to last too much longer. I think we're, as Americans, we're just fed up at this point. Yeah. To be honest. The bulk of us. We just want to, yeah, we got to do things to be safe, but still, we, we want to live our lives, you know. <laughs> so. I, I, I just got it because I'm doing, I use a software that people can go on Facebook and send comments to me, and I then I can post them on this live thing. And Mark Benson, who is the guide at the ritz carlton here in orlando just said bring him by steve he can put you on your biggest largemouth bass within the first five minutes of being on property that sounds like fun so when you get <laughs> down if you if you make your way down here for anything anything you get you get with me you get a hold of me you and i'll go over there and i'll put you in touch with mark and you will have the greatest two hours of fishing in your life because they're pristine, managed perfectly waters on the Ritz Carlton, the greatest hotel of all time. Can you get me a room? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can get you a room, but I can get you some of the best fishing you'll ever see in your life. Um, and it's always good. It's always good. So. See, the, see you, that that's a tough phrase when you live in Michigan to hear people say the best fishing of your life because we got some phenomenal fisheries up here in Michigan. Yes. We don't have the 10 and 12 pound largemouth, but when you're catching six, seven pound smallmouth, that's pretty comparable. Oh, <laughs> so, I, I want the six or seven pound smallmouth more than anything. Yeah. I went, I went to Chickamauga this year over the winter just to go fishing with, uh, three pros to go smallmouth fishing. Um, so uh, and I haven't even been able to talk about that fishing since since it's happened. But you know, Did it you is. Get into him on check. Um, one John Murray got us into him. Uh, okay. Let me just say that the other two people didn't really do very well. <laughs> Throw him under the bus. He was yeah. Throw him under the bus. <laughs> well, I, well, I wish I could, but I won't be happy about it. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so everyone, I got to say thank you for your time today, man. I was giving you a hard yeah. time. I'm like, what happened to this dude? Yeah, it worked out a little crazy turkey hunting. Did you get a turkey? Frustrating. Did you get a turkey um, this morning? I didn't go this morning because oh. we're supposed to not have rain all day tomorrow. Now it's raining all day. Uh, and I had some work stuff I had to get done first thing this morning because like yesterday I did an all day sit. Went had lunch, came back, and as I'm going back to my spot, I see a hen dragging a tom. I dropped right to the ground, crawled through grass, and the tom was ten feet in the private property. Can't pull the trigger. Yeah, we we. And I'm sitting there, and the guy because they're now to use, now allowed to use elevated platforms on private property for turkey. Okay. Shoots it thirty minutes later. Oh man! And it was one of my four big ones I've been watching. Oh, so, that sucks. Yeah. State land hunting, man. That's what it is. Yeah. That, <laughs> we get down here and we have a lot of people like even Mark who has who's at the Ritz Carlton. He's the biggest turkey hunter of all time. He's the Osceola turkey king down here. But he uh, it's tough down here too to be on, on if you're not on private land. 
public land is there's a lot of people that go hunting and you got to be careful and and i think they i think they know to be honest i think they yeah. uh, they can feel the pressure I think I'm going fishing this weekend instead of turkey hunting. <laughs> like, there's a lot of birds, but 7,000 acres along a river, so there's not a lot of real estate because it's narrow, and you're on top of each other. You're fighting. If you're not the first one in the parking lot, you're not going to get that prime spot when they get off the roof. So Yeah. Well, let's do another one of these soon, but I want everyone to go check out his channel. Go check out JC Dropshot on the YouTube channel. Check him out on Facebook. Are You're on Instagram. Inst- Instagram. You're on everything, correct? Yep, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Yeah, it's off the dot podcast. Yes. By the way, don't just put off the dock in. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Check them out. Trying to uh trying to make my way through this world, man. Man, you're doing you're doing a great <laughs> job. Keep up the great work. Um, I enjoy the channel. I, I want everyone else to go out there and check it Thank out you. too. Uh, the, the has great videos and, and some of the new stuff that you've been putting up are, is great. So keep up the great work, man. And I appreciate it's nice to meet you by the way. And thank you again. Likewise. And we'll, let's talk. And if you get down here to Florida, let's, let's get hooked up and we'll go see Mark. I always got two weeks of vacation and winter is awfully cold up here. Yeah. Well, winter's <laughs> winter's really cold up there. <laughs> so you never know road trip might be in the future for me <laughs> awesome well i appreciate the time thank you very much everyone jc drop shot thanks dude thanks man later bro everyone go check out his podcast and his his youtube channel it's jc drop shot i'm glad i got a hold of him that turned out to be even better think about what has happened today mike ortigo started us off then we talked to michael we had the it pre the interview that was recorded with michael O. Okralik from Knock and Tail Lures. Then we talked to David Dudley and then JC Drop Shop. So thank you for watching. Next week, that will be something else. That is Russian. My mom wanted to know earlier and I couldn't answer. That is Russian. That'll change next week. We went from English to Spanish to French, which I had to remember, to now Russian. And next week, I'll figure something else out and put it up there. But guys, make sure you share this. I'll put this on the face on the YouTube channel later on if you missed it. But thank you for being part of Live from the Cops, uh, episode six. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where we're going to go from here. To be honest, got lots of people that have asked to be on, and uh, sometimes I just don't want this to go on for seven hours because heaven forbid. I don't know if every everybody could handle that. So guys, thanks for watching. Thank you to all the people there. Make sure you check them out. Check out all their great channels and be and and make sure you share this and tell everybody about the channel. Um, we'll have some. Maybe we'll do some sort of giveaways next week and figure some stuff out. But I should say, lots and lot German. Okay, Steve, I'll do German next week. That's just for you, Steve. German. I'm writing it down. Yeah, it wasn't. You're right. You're right. Technically, it wasn't English since it is Casa, isn't it? You're right. Can't can't deny Hammer. I should mention, we have got, I think, and I'm not, I could be slightly over-exaggerating by one or two. I think I have 14 or 15 new products coming in today through Friday. All sorts of new lures. So... We will start to do some new um, closer looks. Friday's closer look will be of the 13 fishing crankbait. Only because I think you're going to really like what I did. It's a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to do some different things with these closer looks. I'm trying to do some more editing. But at the same time, my son followed the the lure in the, in the high five, by the way, Tim. High five. My son f- uh, followed the lure with the GoPro in the in the water, and it's phenomenal, phenomenal. So there might be some more stuff like that. You really get to see how the wobble of that bait works. So thank you guys for watching. If I don't say it enough, I appreciate everybody. If you've watched any of these and you want to be on the prize packs list, make sure you send us your, e- uh, your address and everything else, and we'll get you on our prize packs list. <clears throat> guys, remember... A few things. Take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. My wife's here. And I need to go say hello to her. Get your fish on. Nice. To see, uh, I'm glad you guys watched. Have a great day. Hope God blesses you. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers.